Hey everybody, Jim Crane here. Welcome to my home here in California on a beautiful sunny day. Today we're going to take a look at a beautiful leather mailbag. The mailbag is really nothing more than a messenger bag, but with all of the features and hallmarks that made up the 19th century U.S. postal satchels. I like mailbags as opposed to, you know, a traditional double buckle messenger bag um, because the features that make a mailbag make it not only very, very attractive, but very, very durable and very useful and very easy to live with on a daily basis. And we'll go over those features. Um, this particular satchel was made by a very talented gentleman named Baron Sertkaya. And when Baron is not singing on the opera stages of the world, he makes these beautiful, high quality leather satchels. This particular bag is made from vegetable tanned leather and Baron will only use vegetable tanned leather in his creations. Let's go over the dimensions of it first of all. He makes these in different sizes. This particular bag is 15 inches wide, it's 10 inches tall, and this is the five and a half inch wide uh, version, okay? It is a satchel, so it's made from uh, flexible leather. The leather right now on this bag, because it's brand new um, and it's vegetable tan leather, still has kind of a firm feel to it, but that will break in beautifully over the course of several months as you use this on a daily basis. So the leather again, it's um, vegetable tan leather and the leather on this bag, I've measured it. The leather that I prefer on a mail bag or messenger bag is six or seven ounce leather. That's the thickness. And I've measured this and it's right at seven ounces. If you go higher than that, you don't have a flexible bag. And if you go thinner than that, um, you just the bag just kind of puddles after a while. So six to seven ounces, just the perfect thickness for a messenger bag or a mail bag. It's what I prefer. This leather is from a tannery called Sapici. Sapici is a Turkish tannery. Turkey is, I believe, the fourth largest leather producer in the world. And because Turkey is located at the crossroads between Asia and Europe, um, they, get, they get a lot of trade there. And, and leather goods in Turkey are abundant and there's a lot of high quality leather. Um, the Turkish tanneries, there are about a dozen that are um, quite large and uh, large producers. They subscribe, they use the European method of, um, of tanning, of pit tanning when they make their vegetable tanned leathers, um, as opposed to the, the Asian methods, which are um, not as environmentally friendly and use uh, chemicals, unfortunately. Um, Sapiche leather, their tannery, uses just botanicals. They, they are um, a traditional pit tanned leather. Um, and the process takes about 40 days, uh, give or take, to produce um, fine leather like this. Chrome tanned leather, you can produce a batch in the morning and you can produce a batch in the afternoon. This takes about 40 days. And the color, this beautiful color on the bag, this is natural. This is, um, a byproduct of the color of the, the tanning liquor that was used. And in this case, this bag, this bag was tanned using chestnut. It's got that beautiful round earthy aroma to it. Um, it's just lovely um, as opposed to kind of a sharp, harsh um, uh, odor from uh, chrome tanned leather. Um, but this is a beautiful vegetable tanned leather. It's about seven ounces. And um, what I like about this bag, what it really impresses me about this bag is the attention to detail. Baron is really a perfectionist um, and it really shows in these products. Um, first of all, it's all hand cut leather. So he's not using any stamping dies or click, clicked out leather. It's all hand cut. And it's all hand stitched using saddle stitching. And the thread being used is a UV resist resistant polyester. And it's quite thick. It's a very, uh, it's a very thick uh, thread. So it's gonna be very durable. You're not gonna have to worry about 
um, you know, a seam coming apart on you, even decades from now. Um, so let's kind of go over the, the features of it. Um, he's using, on this particular bag, this uh, grab handle. The grab handle is three pieces of that beautiful vegetable tanned leather. And then um, it's held onto the bag at the D-ring anchor point using this um, very heavy duty uh, harness clip. And harness clips are used to hold the strap on as well. So the grab handle is beautiful, nice and thick. It has a really good feel in your hand. And you can either leave the grab handle on there like that. You can detach it um, and just use the bag as a, strictly as a messenger bag. Or you can take the strap off and just use it as a like a briefcase. Um, so um, Baron is using these harness clips, and a harness clip is just a great big heavy-duty brass hook. And harness clips are, like I mentioned, extremely durable, but a harness clip um, only likes to go on a bag in one direction. And what do I mean by that? I mean a harness clip wants to go on the bag where you start installing it from the inside of the D-ring, okay? You don't want to install it from the outside of the D-ring like that. And the reason you don't want to do that is um, the harness clip can, can just come off if you're not careful. If you go to pick up the bag um, and you're not careful, it'll just pop off like that, okay? so. You don't want it to start from the outside and have that happen. You want to start it from the inside of the D-ring and you won't have that problem, okay? So again, detachable. You can have this bag made where this grab handle is actually attached without the harness clips just to those two rivets like that, okay? Without the harness clips. He, he'll do it both ways, okay? So we'll put those on. The strap is also this beautiful chestnut colored leather. Um, but the strap is, I don't know if it was cut from the same hide. I, I, I don't think it was because the strap has a um, kind of a broken in feel to it already. It, it may be because of all the work that went into saddle stitching this in, the entire length of this strap, which is considerable. You'd have to change positions on the stitching pony many, many times, and that may be why it has this more silky kind of soft feel to it. But it's two pieces of leather, two straps that are stitched together, saddle stitched together. They run through this beautiful pad, and this leather uh, pad, shoulder pad, is uh, filled with leather. So there are, I think there's three layers of leather in here. So Baron's not using um, foam or something like that that might break down over time. It's actually padded with leather and it feels wonderful. It just feels very substantial and, and quite luxurious and quite soft in your hands. The um, strap is quite generous. Uh, he does use Conway buckles. Um, in fact, on this strap, there's only one Conway buckle because all of the slack is taken up on one end. Okay, so we don't have one on this side. But you can see it's quite generous. I'm little over 5'8", and that's where I would have it. So if you're taller, there's still plenty of slack in there. If you're shorter, you can take it up some more as well. The um, keepers or belt loops, as I like to call them, you can see they're beautifully hand-stitched um, to take up that slack if you need to, okay? Beautiful, beautiful um, strap here. I'm gonna take it off as we go through, and look at other portions of the bag. So we've got a magazine pocket. You can see the thickness of the leather there. And on this bag, Baron has used two different colors of threads. He's used a contrasting stitching uh, where it shows and where it doesn't show so much, he's used this chestnut colored stitching. Um, the magazine pocket is the full length of the bag. And I just love these. That's where I throw my cell phone. Um, I'll throw books or address books or the mail in there or something. But I love having a, a pocket on the back of the bag. On the front of the bag, you can see this stitching here on the storm flap. This stitching is um, it's just there for aesthetics. It doesn't really serve any purpose because the leather is just a single thickness of leather. It's not two, uh, two hides stitched together 
So it's just a single, single thickness. So it's just there to balance out the other stitching on the bag. It's just simply there to showcase the, uh, the artist um, mastery. Um, and this is, again, all saddle stitch. It would have taken a long time to saddle stitch that. Um, and I believe on the straightaways here, Baron used like a comb type punch. But in the radius, these are all hand punched individually, which would take a great deal of time. A lot of time and care went into making this bag. So um, Baron has used this collar uh, buckle here. And I can't remember the first time I saw the use of one. It might have been uh, the leather shop on their heirloom messenger bag, or it might have been a Marcelino bag. Um, but a lot of makers are using this now. The reason is it's just super simple, super easy to use to get in and out of the bag. This particular one is doesn't have a shiny. It's got kind of this um, matte finish to it, which I really, really like. Um, it looks like it's already, you know, has some age on it. Um, Baron has um, got a very good eye for detail. One of the things um, that I love about this is where he's attached the pull, he's run the leather strap through this second bar. It has this little nub and there's a hole punched in there and that holds this pull secure. So this pull's not gonna be flopping around. Um, when the pull kind of flops around, the bag will kind of pop open a lot more easily. So it takes a little more um, intention to open the bag when this pull is secure like that. So some of you might like your bags to plop open really fast. This is my preference. I like to um, have some intent when I open the bag. And it holds the flap quite securely, so when you shut it, um, it's quite secure. It's not flopping around, which I like. So um, again, it's all hand-stitched. Beautifully done. He did secure it with a Chicago screw here. On the inside of the bag, uh, the leather, the flesh side is not very raggedy. It's got kind of a firm uh, feel to it, um, which I prefer. I don't like that really raggedy kind of um, suede kind of um, flesh side. I, I prefer it this way. Even a polished one I like. Uh, but we've got a nice generous storm flap. You'll notice that um, the storm flap covers the full width of the bag, so you're not going to get water coming in on the ends if, it's, if you're caught in the rain. We've got a pocket here on the front, and of course, hand stitched, secured with little copper rivets. Um, this will fit an iPhone 12, the full size one, even with a case on it, um, so it'll probably fit your phone. Around the top of the bag, uh, Baron has used a uh, double thickness of leather that he has stitched together. I've seen other leather artisans use, employ that same method. And it just makes the opening very, very durable, very low chance of a failure on a seam line. So it's double, double thickness of layer, uh, leather all the way around the perimeter. So one of the things that I look for when I'm looking at a mailbag is the skill of the maker and um, how they think. And in this case, I'm very happy to see that when Baron put this together and thought about this, um, he put the strap here, which is traditional on a, on a mailbag. It's a single thickness of leather. So again, this stitching is just for, um, just for aesthetics. But the way it's put together, when you pull on it, all of the stress travels right through that leather strap like it's supposed to. I've seen some leather mail bags where you pull on it and you can see these seams pull apart. Um, and so the makers in that case will usually put a rivet in here or a Chicago screw to hold these seams together as you open it. But in this case, it's completely unnecessary to put a rivet there because all of the stress is going right through that strap like it's supposed to. On the inside, it's one big opening. There is a um, natural uh, veg tanned leather pocket back there. The pocket is 11 inches wide, so it will hold an iPad. It does have some contrasting leather on it and stitching. Um, it's got a pocket here for, oh, your wallet or a cell phone, and then two business card pockets. And the business card pockets are ample. You can easily slide a business card in there. 
Um, sometimes I've seen it where you can barely put a card in there, but um, there was some thought that went into that, um, which I really appreciate. It's secured. Your iPad pocket is secured with a little leather strap and a, and a snap there. Okay. Again, beautiful, beautiful stitching. Baron put his logo right here on the back spine and um, it says Baron Ankara. And uh, he could have put it up here or heaven forbid on the front of the bag. I know a lot of you don't like logos. I, I, I'm indifferent, but I don't want my logo right on the front of the bag unless you know Elvis Presley made it or some, someone like that. Um, so it is quite discreet right there in the back. Okay. Again, traditional method, the gusset is in three pieces, double stitched, and then copper rivet securing that. Okay. It's an absolutely gorgeous bag. Um, and when you look at a bag like this, when I looked at this bag, um, I thought there's just no way that this quality of a bag is, uh, matches what I paid for the bag. Okay. Um, it is a very high quality bag. It is beautifully constructed. A lot of thought, a lot of time, a lot of detail went into making this bag. But if you go to his um, Etsy store, you're going to see that the uh, price of the bag is extremely reasonable. If this bag were made in the United States or if it were uh, made in Europe, it would be two or three times the price. And even though Baron is in Ankara, um, he's providing free express shipping to the United States or Europe and other countries. Um, and that can be pretty expensive. So this is a real bargain. If you're looking for a beautiful heirloom quality, vegetable tanned, made by hand um, leather mailbag, and you don't have a lot of money to spend, you wanna run over to Barron's Etsy store, there's a link below, and grab one of these while you can. Um, it's just amazing, the amount of detail, the beauty, the wonderful leather, um, the eye for detail. Um, these are bags right now are way underpriced in my opinion. So um, until next time, everybody, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you again in another video coming up. Bye-bye.